have shared with each of you the um, Earth Charter document. I don't know whether you had the chance to have a look at it, but uh, I'll just share a brief uh, description about it. As you may are, each of you, aware of that um, we are living in a period of critical moment in Earth's history, a time that we have to act so we can have a better future that we all want to live in, uh, in good uh, conditions, in good Earth conditions. Um, as the world becomes increasingly inter interdependent and fragile, the future at once holds great peril and great promise. To move forward, we must recognize that in the midst of a magnificent diversity of cultures and life forms, we are one human family and one earth community with a common destiny. Uh, the possibilities of future concerns may come and we all have to be prepared to work together and come up with concrete actions to challenge this um, as human beings. We need to come up with long-term answers to deal with environmental issues, need to investigate biodiversity's role, and we should really aim for sustainable development, educate ourselves, and together work for concrete actions to help to solve local, national, and worldwide challenges. So um, we must join together to bring forth a sustainable global society founded and on respected for, on respect for na nature, univer universal human rights, as well as economic justice and a culture of peace. Towards this end, it is imperative that we, the peoples of Earth, declare our responsibility to one another, to the greater community of life, and to future generations. So um, I think, Greshma, you have accepted on your shoulders the hardest part of all this webinars where we're going to discuss about um, Earth uh, Chapter Charter, which involves also peace, the Peace Charter in it. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to your presentation. So uh, I would like to invite you now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ella. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, having this space. And thanks to all like for joining for this conversation. So today we are going to discuss about Earth Charter. It's a visionary document. So uh, for this presentation, I will be talking like why Earth Charter is a visionary document and how we can use it and how we can um, use that for doing the local climate actions. So this is um this is the things we are going to discuss today so i hope you get you all get uh time to read our charter and we shared that in the email so if you um if you can open that earth charter please do so we will um read together and we will reflect it so yeah please and also, I will start with my personal story, how I came to know um, Earth Charter and how I become an uh, Earth Charter Aim Leader. So in the year 2019, I did my graduation in International Peace Studies at the University for Peace, Costa Rica. During that time, I came to know about Earth Charter. And then I uh, re read about Earth Charter and also the Secretariat of Earth Charter is based at uh, Costa, Rica, like Costa Rica and at the campus of University for Peace. So during that time, it was like a wonderful learning experience. And I, I was a peace studies student. And before that, I introduced myself as an interfaith peace builder. And then when I read uh, Earth Charter, I found that the fourth pillar of Earth Charter is democracy, nonviolence, and peace. So, whenever we heard the word Earth Charter, we normally see, uh, see or think that this will be a document related to nature. But uh, when I saw the fourth pillar is about democracy and peace, I wonder like how it comes under Earth Charter. 
uh, so I was very curious to know and explore how uh, peace is related to nature and how the impacts and how it reflects. So I uh, I applied for an internship at the Secretariat of a Charter and I got that. And during my internship period, one of the tasks were to find out the impacts of 20 years. So they were celebrating their 20th anniversary. So they asked me to find the impacts, like how Earth Charter impact people, how Earth Charter impact the movement. So I was uh, in charge of doing that and I read all the 20 years of reports and I found that how interesting it is, how people use Earth Charter as a gate, uh, gate line or as a compass to explore and to do more sustainable activities. So that actually in, uh, influenced me to take actions on um, at the ground level and that eventually well, uh, like eventually created Echo Pistin Cafe. So Echo Pistin Cafe is really inspired by the pillars of Earth Charter and we design all the modules according to the Earth Charter principles. So in my life, Earth Charter has a big role. So for today's uh, presentation and today's session, we are going to explore together how we can use this document for our daily life uh, and how we can integrate this into uh, our professional and personal life. So let's uh, begin uh, this journey. And uh, as always, we will having a dialogue session. So I really need your participation and I really need uh, your interactions and more comments. So let's begin. So Natalia, please, next slide. Please. Yeah, so um, Earth Charter is a visionary document and it has four pillars and 16 principles. And we say that Earth Charter is powering a global movement. So I would like to take you uh, the history of Earth Charter and how it formed. Earth Charter is a global document uh, which consists of 16 principles and the talk or the initiative started the initiative actually started in 2000, but the consultation process were started during 1995. And even before that, in 1987, when UN World Commission on Earth and Development called for a new charter to guide the transition to sustainable development. So since then, the work is uh, work was there and there were like lots of consultation process were happening. And the visionaries, Michael Gorbachev and Maurice Strong were the um, leaders who work for this Earth Charter. And there were like hundreds of consultations happened in all the, those years. And there were like separate NGO forums and national level consultations were there, local and regional level consultations were there. So as you know, like there were like lots of UN documents and lots of UN charters are there. And what was the speciality of Earth Charter documentation is that like people were involved a lot. This Earth Charter has the voice of people and it records it and uh, it or adopted the voice of people. So that's the uh, difference between other charters and Earth Charter. And also the writings of Maurice Strong and Gorbachev uh, were sharing that uh, during uh, the entire process, they feel the speciality of uh, like collecting together and seeing the interdependence in forming this Earth Charter. So when we read, uh, when we read UN Charter, we can see how the states are connected, how the nations are connected. And when we read the human rights, the Declaration of Human Rights, we can see how the individual rights and states are connected. When you read Earth Charter, we can see the connection between people and nature. So that's a speciality. So this is the uh, document which really talks about ethical values and how all life forms, not just humans connected to nature, but all life forms and ecosystem connected to nature. So the while reading the Earth Charter principles, I really love the way it describes and the love the way how the principles and sub principles help us to act 
So each and every sentence gives us more inspiration to take actions and also reflect on how we live and how the lifestyle of uh, our lifestyle impact the earth and impact the ecosystem. So that's the real speciality of Earth Charter. Next slide. Um, yeah, pillar one. So pillar one talks about respect and care for the community of life. So um, if you read um, the Earth Charter principles, you can see the pillar one uh, has four principles and it talks about how to respect and care for the community of life. And in the next slide, you can see these four, uh, uh, four principles which talks about respect, earth, and life in all its diversities. And the principle two states that care for the community of life with understanding, compassion, and love. And the third principle talk, principle talk about Demo build democratic societies that are just participatory, sustainable, and peaceful. The fourth principle talks about secure earth beauty for present and future generations. So these are the four principles under the pillar one. So I would like to hear like how you think, like how how can we show the respect and um. Um, how can we show the respect towards the life forms and to our communities? So, yeah, please feel free to unmute and share, like, um, how can we show, like, show um, or respect? Yeah. We have one raised hand. Victor, uh, would you like to answer uh, okay, what actions? Um, okay. Yeah. Hope I'm audible. Yes, yes. Yes, Victor. Yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, Greshma, and it's so wonderful to see that each time um, I look into the Earth Charter pillars and principles, I'm always glad to see that such principle existed. To me, if the whole world can embark on this principle, the world will definitely become a better place. I'm a transformed person because I got to know this principle of Earth Charter, and it's so beautiful. Now, looking at um, the respect for the community of life, which is the first, followed by um, the nature's um, integrity. One thing I understand about the first principles, the first pillar with these principles is that they are all bonded and linked together in a chain. So if we have to talk about uh, interdependence of all life, what it implies is I know that I can't do everything by myself. Just like a usual a Nigerian usual proverb that said, the day you were born, you weren't the one that bathed yourself. And the day you will die, you will not be the one that will bury yourself. So what it means is you will need people to survive. You will need systems to survive. You will need organizations to survive. So there is this nature-based wisdom that gives us the interconnectedness not just to humans, but also to nature itself. So this first pillar is talking about interdependence that occur between all forms of life. And it's obvious that whenever we look around the world, it is obvious that the reason why we have the issues we are having, injustice, climate change, and the rest, is because humans fail to understand that it is more about echo and not ego. And it is more about the interdependence that exists and not just about ourselves. And this falls about to love. If you know that you are interdependent, you won't hurt your neighbor. And that's where love, which is the second principle, comes in. So the third is democracy and freedom. If you know that you are interdependent, you allow everybody to live to do what makes their system work. And the last one is justice across generations. So we have to say that, okay, if we are interdependent, it means the next generation are totally dependent on the decisions we make as this current generation. And that is where the concept of sustainability and regeneration come into place. I don't really want to take more of um, Greshma's time, but I think I just have to just stop here. Thank you so much. Thanks, Victor, for explaining that.
and as victor said like uh, we can see uh, from uh, from the principle like the pillar one we can see like close interconnectedness and interdependence and how uh, our decisions are going to affect the future generation and how we can be more mindful regarding our decisions and environmental concern decisions. So in the following principles also, we can see such, uh, such interconnections and how all are connected in one way or the other. So um, when we reflect on the COVID-19 also, like when we are having the pandemic time, we know that we know and we experience that one's life and one's health is really important for others also if one has like one had the infection then it easily get get or spread to other ones so um, it's individual uh, individual as well as the community's responsibility to be like remainful about uh, the precautions and how uh, how can we prevent the infections in the prevent the spread of infection like that in every point of life we can see this kind of interconnections and uh, why we have to be more responsible for our future generations not just future generations but our current society also so earth charter tells us how um how to respect and how to care like more uh, more than like um how to love others not just humans but the nature also so that's about the pillar one we can move to pillar two ecological integrity here we are going to talk more about the environment and environment conservation so the next slides we are talking about how to protect earth and earth, uh, how to restore the integrity of earth's ecological systems with special concern for biological diversity and the natural process that sustain life, and also how to prevent harm towards nature, and how to lead a sustainable lifestyle, and how to share this knowledge. So these are the principles that um, that uh, in the pillar two, and here we have to reflect on um, what are the environmental decisions we are taking. Are we mindful about uh, our environment when we take a decision? Are we uh, considering environment and eco-friendly and how it aligns with the charter principles? So if we consider the principle number five, it talks about how to protect, how to protect and restore the ecological integrity and establish and safeguard the nature and biosphere reserves and also promoting the recovery of endangered, endangered species and ecosystem and how to manage the use of renewable resources and how to manage the extraction and use of non-renewable resources. So we can see uh, the kind of things like how to protect Earth's diversity in the pillar in the principle five and as well as when we dive deeper into each principles, uh, it, ha it has more power and it it definitely like it says how to act and how to take action. So for the Eco Peace Cafe series, we always say that we have uh, we have to have this dialogue. We need to talk, and after this talk, we need to take action. So Earthshot is a good guideline, and it's it acts as a compass on how to take actions in our daily life. So. Um, we have a very limited time. That's why I couldn't go into each of the sub-principles. That's why I highly encourage you to read the Earth Charter properly and reflect on it. Take time to read Earth Charter and understand it. Uh, understand it. And uh, when you read, read from your perspective and also um, how you are going to communicate with the communities you are working with or at the family and after reading the earth charter please take time to sit with your family members and share what you learned from it so they can also use earth charter principles in their work and um, and also if you have kids or if you are working with school students please inform them about what sustainability is so UNESCO adopted Earth Charter as an ethical guideline for sustainable development. 
as we are living in the period of achieving sustainable development goals earth charter is an ethical guideline on um, inspiring us to how to take actions and how to do uh, how to commit ethically to our needs and i always say that earth charter is kind of bible for me on reflecting on how i work and how i do um like environment related work and how i communicate with the children so yeah so please uh, take time to reflect on earth charter and please use it in your in your work and in your professional life so anyone would like to share any environmental decisions you recently take like reducing the consumption of plastic or using more renew uh, renewable energy like that it would be great if you can share it with us any like any environmental decisions that means like um what kind of decisions you take recently to to be like more eco friendly or more like focusing on sustainable lifestyle Shall we do again um, the little game that we had played? I can start and then I can pick a name and we go it that way. <laughs> Sorry for being the <laughs> starter. Um, well, I'm trying my best with um, adjusting into different, more sustainable lifestyles. But I think I'm failing. Recently, I'm trying to use more and more online forms, which are like, Google Docs, Google Links, instead of um, using different documents that, that you know, take more and more uh, internet capacity and internet speed. Uh, since I've learned that internet and internet speed and all of the data that we, we share with each other um, obtains a lots of, lots of, <laughs> um, um, negative environmental effects uh, i started trying to change my way of sharing documents into sharing just document links um, so that is one thing i've changed i want to continue with nelly uh, if you may share share nelly uh, thank you so much uh... I think that I take uh, the decision to read uh, the visionary document, each chapter. After that, I will take uh, the action with you uh, to, to share for them, which is the, which is contained in this document. Mm -hmm. yes. Nice. Thank you. Um, thanks. Thanks, Nelly. And anyone else? Abarna? Expected my name. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think it was, um, I don't know how, when you said recent, that's what tripped me up a bit because I think some of the stuff that I've been doing has just been uh, like, just unconscious life choices, I would say, in terms of um, uh, well, not having a personal vehicle and, you know, pretty much just living on public transport all the time. And uh, that, uh, and, you know, so when it comes to local shopping, and I think that's where, that's the next thing it lead, led to was due to lack of, like, not uh, having made the choice not to drive um every i mean not to drive uh not everywhere just not drive uh we've taken to shopping locally so because uh, for example uh, the it will, the shop that sells like indian groceries and indian vegetables is pretty much in the city we live in the you know uh residential areas outside the city and uh it's uh for one thing uh, initially, when I went to the shops on the twice, it just didn't look very fresh. So I had that's that was the main decision why I decided not to go. And then you start learning about stuff like the you know miles and stuff because 
it's one thing for dry groceries because that they can just stock pile over months and stuff and it you know it's like lentils and rice and things that's okay that doesn't go bad i mean it's still miles but still um uh, when it comes to vegetables they have to be it's it's short duration you can keep it fresh so they have to harvest and bring these uh, uh, in you know uh, flights and things which can obviously lead to a lot of uh, ecological issues when you're doing that many uh, you know vegetables keeping that fresh so at least if you are buying local british vegetables we are not contributing to that additional miles in that way and that's also easily accessible by, by walk for me as well so practically as well it works for me but uh, the, one of the uh, recently i had a very similar meeting we were looking with the i don't know if uh, it's a scottish organization it's uh, called the ethnic minority environmental network and they were doing a consultation and i just had a big rant about how all the um uh, the grocery shops here, the UK grocery shops, they pack their vegetables in plastic bags. Uh, so it's like, you know, you, you basically, for example, you go to the shops, you have, for example, carrots, they just come as a one kg plastic bag. So you can't just grab vegetables to the quantity you want. And it's such a waste because I say, for example, um, all these every, in a week, I, uh, I use, you know, these many different types of vegetables. I have to throw away at least three or five types of plastics. I think they're not recyclable plastics as well. So, but I don't have a choice. I, it's what every shop does this. So it's not like I can go to any shop. At least I haven't found that is accessible to me, at least, that it can okay. this thing. But when it does come, I'm looking forward to the day where I can buy vegetables with all the plastic bags. But I think shopping locally and using public transport, um, that's possibly, I would say, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sabrina, for bringing that to the conversation also. Like, I also use public trans transportation and, um, yeah, and also, like, uh, buying more local products and also considering about um, the usage of clothing. Like, normally we buy lots of clothes that also affect, um, affect the nature badly. And also, um, I remember once I had a conversation with um uh, with unity air there was a presentation regarding like how um the child labor is happening like in the clothing industry like um I, they use like uh, children to do the dyeing and all the uh, like manufacturing uh, the clothing material so when we are using cloth we have to be uh, like mindful about what's happening as uh, uh, as I shared earlier like how we uh, all are interdependent and how we are um, like giving um, like the contribution to the nature like whether it's good or bad it's always affect the communities so yeah that's about this pillar and we can move to the next pillar Pillar 3 talks about social and economic justice. And in this pillar, we have four principles, which talks about eradicates poverty, equitable human development, gender equality and equity and dignity, inclusion and well-being. So in this pillars, we can... Um, think about the economic development of countries and how we are um, seeing equality and equity in our societies and how we can ensure the economic activities and in, uh, and institutions at all levels promote human development in an equitable way. And also we need to affirm gender equality and equity as a prerequisite to sustainable development and ensure universal access to education, healthcare, and economic opportunity. And the principal toll talks about how to, how to uphold the right of all without discrimination to a natural and social environment, supportive of human dignity and spiritual well-being. So these are the four principles in the social and economic justice. So each principle talks about how to ensure a equitable distribution and how to enhance the financial and technical resources of developing nations and 
and also it, uh, how to ensure that all states support sustainable resources use and environmental protection and progressive um, progressive labor standards. So this all can be reflected on these pillars, such, uh, social and economic justice. So yeah, like, um, can you please consider some uh, recent news related to economic justice and how uh, how might uh, charter principles offer insight into addressing those challenges uh, that are highlighted in this event? So, yeah, so it would be great if some of you can share your insights on that. Like, do you see any connections with any recent um, economical situation or social situation in your place and um, how we can relate that to the Earth Charter Principles. Yeah, um, actually, when you were just talking about this, um, something came to mind. It was something I just saw today, actually. During lunch, I was watching this um, video. Like, it was a, on YouTube, a National Geographic episode. It was just a random episode that showed up. And it was uh, talking about this village in Tamil Nadu in India. Uh, I mean, some of you might have heard of it. I don't know. It's a sustainable, completely sustainable village uh, near uh, Coimbatore. So um, essentially what happened was uh, the, it used to be like a really impoverished, like uh, very, in. Uh, I'm saying, I think about in 19, um, early 1990s, so 92, 93, around that time, it was just, you know, full of huts. They had no electricity, water, nothing. Like it was a really bad state of uh, being and people basically started migrating out of that place. Um, so this is somewhere near the Nilgiris and people lack of resources. So people were just migrating out of it. And then this one man, he became when he became the head of the village. So that's, you know, the Panchayat head of Panchayat, we would say in the Indian system. He uh, was he he started exploring these different uh, what are the options to, you know, uh, keep the build up the village and everything and if you look at I'll, I'll share the video link in the chat maybe after this you can look it up uh, uh, essentially what he did is he um, uh, uh, brought in like basically all he did was it's not like he would put in personal resources or anything he was a rich man who put personal resources or anything no it was just good planning basically in terms of getting access to a lot of government funds like uh, all the different central government and local government, whatever funds and subsidies that he, the government was offering, he encouraged the people to apply for it. He applied for it as a, the thing. They built a windmill and the uh, village. Uh, and now it's like a proper planned village with proper water resources. And every single house has solar panels in it. And like they built each house to the same specification. So they all look equal i mean and uh, they've built every house has solar panel in it and they actually now um the windmill generates because it's near the hill and they've uh, it's actually quite a windy place so they made use of that and the wind energy that they are producing he's actually now they're producing access to the their requirements and they're selling it back to the government for about uh what is it now uh about a, i would say uh 20 lakhs, I think they said, rupees in uh, they are making for the village. So they're actually getting an income for the village in that. So um, I think it's important where I was thinking is, so, you know, he was thinking in a uh, environmental, he was thinking about the environment as well and the lo uh, local area as well. And now people are migrating back to the village, people who left the village because it's increased employment opportunity. Therefore, there's no poverty there. Um, women are not having to walk long distances to get water or anything because all that is being there and they're being educated. So I, I think it basically, I think it pretty much covers that particular story of that village pretty much covers all four of the principles here. And it was a very, uh, it, like people now are coming to study the village model and things like that. And I think it's in, one of the ways to keep this particular, keep these pillars going strongly is knowledge sharing. So when project success, successful projects like this happen, there's a big, there's, it's important that the knowledge about how it became successful and how it can be implemented in other places has to be shared. Yeah. 
Yeah, thanks, Sabarna, for sharing uh, that and also how um, how the four pillars uh, still important to do the economic and social justice to the um, to the communities. And yeah, like as you mentioned, um, like we are going through lots of challenges and uh, still we need to remember this is something that uh, uh, that come up in 2000 and still all the issues are there and all the crisis we are having is still uh, still here. So that's why it's, uh, I always call like a charter is a living document. So it, it's useful for all the generations to reflect on and also act on. But while we are having the education process, like while we go through the education process at our schools or colleges, uh, normally, like I, uh, I'm talking about myself, like I don't uh, really uh, know uh, anything about the sustainable development or how to take actions. So, um, so these principles really uh, giving us an opportunity to reflect and communicate it with the uh, the school students or in integrate this work to the education system. And many countries are doing that. And many universities are integrating a charter principles to their curriculum. So um, here we are having uh, 10 members. So please use a charter principles in your work. And most of you are working with faith community. So it's uh, it's really good if you can communicate the importance of a charter principles with the faith communities because it also gives an element of spirituality uh, which also connects the uh, connects etc always connects both spirituality and ethics to um to our daily life like or uh, reflecting on uh, the spiritual needs as well so yeah please use uh, etc to find solutions and find not just finding solution ourselves but communicating the solutions and taking action for a better tomorrow and creating changes and now we are moving forward to the pillar four, the last pillar. It's talking about democracy, nonviolence, and peace. And the four principles are uh, strengthening democracy and integrate values into education and integrate uh, respect all living beings and spread nonviolence and peace. So uh, as a peace builder, this principle is uh, the principle 16 is more close to me like how to uh, do nonviolence act and how to do peace education so I use the charter as a, um, as a guideline for doing my peace education work I reach out to schools and use a charter to bring together people and one of the story that really inspired me is uh, the story of Sierra Leone after the conflict they used a charter for the reconciliation so the uh, the young people in Sierra Leone bring a um, group of uh, ex combatants in the same room and have dialogue by using a uh, charter principles. They use a charter as a uh, like as a tool uh, tool for having the dialogue and sharing something and reflect on it. That really bring greater impact and that really change uh, the. Uh, the situation of that community and bring more peace in the communities. So that's about the peace and let's dive deeper into how a charter act as a tool for sustainability. Uh, we can move to next slide. Uh, next slide. So as I said, a charter is um, like it's uh, it reflects how we all are like interdependent and how we all are interconnected. So it uh, and for example, we can say that uh, when we say about interconnectedness, we can think about honeybees or the pollinator insects. If uh, there is an extinction happen for this pollinator insect, like we know definitely there will be no life forms. So from a very small life form that will affect the existence of uh, the full life form. So that's how we are connected. So the interconnectedness of environmental, social and economic issues and underscore the need for a holistic approach 
to uh, sustainability so it certainly gives the uh, the spirit and all the essence of how all the issues are interconnected normally people focus on one or two principles and they uh, completely focus on that principles and work on it but uh, through a copy series of dialogues we are trying to address uh, all the pillars and all the 16 principles because i personally feel that in uh, in our life it's very important to understand how we can care and how we can respect the community and how uh, it is essential on how to uh, how to protect and how to preserve the environment and also talking about social and economic justice and also talking about peace so i always believe this is a chain and we need to complete the chain that's why all our series of dialogues have the essence of a charter and um like we highlight the themes of social justice peace building and environment together and a charter principle serve as a gate for decision making and policy development to achieve a more just and sustainable world so this is very important we need to use a charter as a decision making uh, thing like as how the commandments act uh, or how the um, religions use their holy scriptures we can use a charter for making the decisions and we can communicate this uh, to the younger generation why because they are the future leaders and they are the ceos of companies so we need to educate them how to use the renewable resources and how not to use the non-renewable resources and how to extract them so then only they are they will be mindful about uh, taking decisions when uh, they are in the leadership position so we we cannot go back to the past and correct it but we can think about the future and um, make good decisions for our future generation and encourage individuals, communities, governments, business and organizations to adopt values and practices uh, and that prioritize the well-being of the planet and all inhabitants. It's very important. So please, when you go back after this session, please reflect on our charter principles and please see, please find the ways on how to use it and how to uh, create more uh, more useful and more sustainable things for our communities. Next slide, please. So empowering communities for positive change. As I mentioned, these are my Ecopi Steam Cafe activities. We do dialogue sessions and we host um, training programs for young people and we work with different religious youth groups and also we plant trees for the betterment of world and for the betterment of the society. So we try to communicate the messages and we always have guest speakers to talk and their experiences. And we always communicate how to, um, how to take the initiative from other countries to, uh, to uh, our countries, like, like taking all the good initiatives and um, using, uh, using or adopting it and use it according to our uh, local context so that's why we use all the activity like use this dialogue to inspire and encourage young people and not just young people we need all the people to work uh, together and uh, next slide so here we are giving you some examples on how local governments universities indigenous communities and national government uh, national development plans and uh, how are started connecting young people so for example if we are taking about local governments there are some organization which integrates a charter principles to their work and they encourage local the local governments to you to adopt a charter for their uh, for almost all their works and um, like while taking the decisions how to take the decisions in a sustainable way and also universities adopt a charter as part of their curriculum and they uh, they have uh, like special modules focusing on a charter and a charter secretariat also helping them to implement these programs and indigenous communities as you are if you read the 
etc you can see there is a special mention of indigenous communities uh, in the uh, etc principle in itself so in uh, indigenous communities also integrate etc principles in their lifestyle and they use that to communicate and uh, they find the inspiration from the earth charter in conserving and preserving nature and also in national development plans, we can see countries like Mexico and countries like Spain use uh, the Earth Charter uh, in different ways. And there are some examples from Spain, how they integrate Earth Charter in, this, in their schools and in their curriculum system uh, to train, um, the, uh, train the students. So educators love Earth Charter principles and uh, we can, like, if we say, like, uh, a ninth grade teacher can use Earth Charter, a foreign language teacher can use Earth Charter, and a university professor can use Earth Charter uh, to communicate their children in different way. And and a, so a social teacher can use the so social justice elements and communicate that with the student. So this is how Earth Charter used in diverse uh, ways. And a charter secretariat and a charter principles are um like are really inspiring young people. And um like we have like lots of uh, charter young leaders are working together for a better world. We have uh Victor here, so we can move to next slides and. Uh, then we can see we can hear from Victor how he he used a charter for um, his local climate actions. Um, next slide, please. So here are some of the Victor's activity. He trains students and he's the founder of Wikipedia. Like it's a, a different theme which uh, shares about information regarding the in, uh, climate actions. And he has a campaign called Planting Birthday Tree and um, like a plastic free campaign is there and lots of work is happening in Nigeria and he has some um, climate storytelling sessions. So I would like to hear from Victor about his work. Victor, can you share how you find the inspiration from Earth Charter to implement activities at your local communities? Oh, um, Grishma, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. And I want to thank the entire management and uh, your wonderful organization for coming up with this. Hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, Victor. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Thank you so much. And um. One thing that, one thing that really um motivates me. Okay. I think uh, my video is turned on now, right? But it's a little bit dark. That's why I had to turn it off. But let me just stay online with it like this i hope it's okay like this yeah yeah it's fine fine with okay you. um one of my greatest motivation is um how do we really put basically the grassroots community into action how do we turn whatever knowledge you had into solving the problem because the problem we are having are not just global problem they are also local problem that need local solution to solve them so we got into many processes and um, after taking the LSE course joined the air charter we started a wonderful movement and um, I think this is my eight years as an environmental educator so we started this movement and we thought, okay, there will be need to reach out to schools. How do we teach these schools? Because over here, climate change, its impact, we see them as just God's perspective of punishing humanity. So it's a very long process and it's a very not funny one, but we started this great move and gradually we initiated the the Earth Storytelling Club. So what we do is we reach out to various schools and tell them, okay, this is what we want to really do. This is what we want to really do. And we partnered with that school. And currently, I think we have almost 16 schools on our registry that we move around to educate the learners on the impact of climate change 
and the solution thereabouts. So we gave them one of the solution which has been so very sustainable. So on every child's birthday, we dedicated that every person involved in our team, 25% of your salary goes into getting trees for these children on their birthday. And everybody in the team agreed. So we are entitled to give these children a birthday tree on their birthday. So this tree is actually a fruit tree. So the role of that child is to nurture this tree, watch this tree grow, till maturity and this tree in return becomes a payback strategy to provide for humanity, food, and even the child. So it was a wonderful movement. We started the plastic creativity, got involved in community cleanup project, and so many things. The goal still remains the same, is that we promote sound environmental education, that every child, every adult, every young person, every old person will know that all of us together, we are responsible in making the world a better place. And that is just one thing we do at Wikipedia, promoting sound environmental education. And this has been what we've been doing using the air charter principles. These air charter principles, respect to the community of life and ecological integrity, we are the basic two that have worked with over the years. And I'm glad to see that every part of these pillars and principles have been very effective. And um, thanks, Greshma, for having me share a lot. There are so many things I would have wanted to share, but I don't really want to take our time. But I will be glad to say that we do so many work. There is so much to be done, connecting peace movement, connecting environmental activities. And I believe that together, every organization putting in their effort we will say that we, with our eyes and with everything around us, we will say that, yes, we are contributing our quota to make the world a better place. So, Greshma, I'm so, I'm so grateful. Natalia and everyone, thanks for the opportunity. And I look forward to see how we can do greater things in Nigeria and beyond as the time goes on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Victor, for sharing and for um for joining Hello. this session yeah can you hear me um am i audible yes you are okay okay thanks um yeah thank you so much victor for joining this session and share your work and i hope um uh, this work inspire many of the participants and inspire them to take initiatives and uh, yeah like uh, I'm sure like everyone has lots of idea but there is some kind of uh, like worries like how to start an initiative like um, am I able to start but I, I would say like just take the first step and then you will see amazing things are coming up so that uh, happened with me. Like I, when I started Echo Peace Teen Cafe, I have this initial doubts, like how to implement, and I have this go, uh, this ideas, but how to implement that. But then I gained the courage, and then I started, and then, um, then I got support from everywhere, and lots of people coming together and encourage us to do more. And Victor is one of them, and. Victor also initiated lots of activities after attending the leadership sustainability course. So we learned that uh, a charter and its applications from um, from uh, from the Earth charter people and how this education uh, like this education programs really helped us to reflect on. So yeah, that's about uh, the Earth charter principles and how to implement activities using a charter principles. Um, we can go to the next slide. So now it's time for breakout sessions. We plan for 15 minutes, but we are going to reduce that. We can be in um, breakout sessions with um, like in 10 minutes. And please take time to re read a charter and select one principle. And please share it in the group, like why, uh, why you like that principle and how that connects to your life, and how you plan to 
take some actions on that principle. So um, as we are a small group, I think Ella, you can um, like create a group with two people like pair. Two, um, uh, shall I, I was thinking of three, but would you like in pairs? Yeah, maybe in pairs okay. will be good. Like as we just have 10 minutes. Perfect. I'll do that. So, yeah. so each person can take five minutes. And mm -hmm. Five minutes to share and five minutes to listen. Okay. okay. I'm opening them now. Hi everyone, welcome back to the main room. And now the floor is yours. You can share your thoughts here and and I'm like I'm eagerly wait waiting to hear from you what which principle you like the most and what are the actions you really wanted to take. So yeah, we have the time to reflect and also share. So please feel free to unmute and share. The time is yours. Uh, I can go first. I don't mind. Um, so uh, Cindy and I were having a great discussion, actually. And uh, <laughs> we were saying go breakout room finish before we could finish. But uh, um, I think what stood out for me with all the principles of all of them was the second one. And particularly the praise. Um, uh, sorry, the, not, uh, the particularly the phrase. Uh, care for the community of life with understanding, compassion, and love. And why that stood out to me mostly was because of the whole thing. It says community of life rather than just community. Because um, for me, at least, the tendency, and I think I've noticed this in most people, when we use the word community, we tend to think of, you know, the people, like community of just the, you know, your local community, your neighbors, you know, the people living in your uh, area or you know people who are part of your faith or ethnic ethnic community or something like that that's what the general tendency is to think about but when I saw the phrase community of life it I had to stop and I was thinking about it's the ecological community you know it's not just the people it's the whole ecosystem that is um, your you know the little sparrow that's in my garden right now or the a robin in my garden or, or the uh, plants that are growing all that that's also part of the community and so um when um i think one of the things from now i definitely will take away from now is try to see it as a community of life always and not just as community because nothing uh, wrong in thinking about people but i think it should be it's always good to think about the bigger picture the whole encompass thing so maybe look at it as you know, the community of life, how all these activities or anything that happens, how is it affecting the community of life as opposed to just a community? Yeah. yeah, thanks, Abarna. Thank you for sharing and thinking about community of life and not not just humans, but including all the, uh, all the community of life. And thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And anyone else? And Muhammad? Um, or Nadalia, Mohammed, are you? Yeah, may I audible? Am yes. I audible? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, I have discussed with Ms. Natalia. Uh, I have uh, selected and I'm interested in the topic of uh, democracy. One, I think it's the second or the third one. So, for me, <clears throat> the art charter discusses and underscores the pivotal role of democracy in sustainable uh, development, like emphasizes the importance of the participatory decision making and accountable, and the inclusion of diverse perspective. Uh, I before discussed this the in diverse perspective. So, uh, for example, I would like to uh, share some mediums to contribution for the contribution, like voting, and the uh, most important is the one advocacy groups. So we must be, uh, especially the South Asia region, uh, we must join and support the environmental organi uh, organizations to ensure that collective voices and influences the policies and regulations. 
for example, the uh, recently I would like to quote an example. The uh, global climate strikes are uh, organized by youth activists like Greta Thunderbolt and demonstrated that the power of democratic exp exp uh, expressions. Uh, for example, people from all uh, all over the we can say the young and the old one walk for walk of the life joined these strikes, calling on governments to take meaningful action against the climate change. So this one was the interesting one. Uh, for uh, and the other one is non-violence. The art charter promotes a culture of non-violence, earth the respect for our life forms and fostering understanding and compassion. Uh, I would like to uh, share the, some of the contributions in, uh, and mediums, for example, education, teaching, non-violent non -violent conflict resolution and empathy in schools, especially in schools and colleges, to cultivate a generation that value peaceful coexistence. Uh, so we are coping up with the next generation, uh, the upcoming challenges. So we must be optimistic and must teach our uh, upcoming generation to cultivate, uh, cultivate a value and peaceful coexistence. Uh, uh, for, uh, for the contribution and the medium, uh, I would like to share a social media is a powerful tool. Using platforms for spreading awareness about the non violent movements uh, and inspiring positive change in the world. For example, uh, the, uh, recent, uh, recently the Green Belt Movement in Kenya, led by the Wangari, uh, used, uh, used this uh, peaceful protest and community based initiative to address environmental and degradation of women empowerment. So uh, that's it from my side. I think we have much less time. Thank yeah, you. Thank, um, thanks, Mohammed, for sharing about democracy and uh, the need of educating um, young people on, on nonviolence and how to practice it and how to promote a culture of peace. So, yeah, thank you so much. And any other thoughts? We have five more minutes. Um, Nadalia, do you want to share? Thank you. Um, so for me, uh, what was interesting when I was looking at the subject of uh, Earth um, Charter, so I saw a, a diagram when, where they visualized all of the four principles. And it was like, uh, it looked like a flower. Uh, and the first principle of uh, respect and care for the uh, community of life it was essential piece as like uh, this you know like the flower has uh, as, uh, <laughs> i forgot the word but anyway it was central and all the other um, principles there were like uh, leaves of this flower and so it just showed that actually uh, community and the respect and care are actually at the center so if we don't have it so actually um, all the other principles won't work. So anyway, it's just my take on it. And I really enjoyed discussing um, our discussion with Mohamed and especially that uh, I asked him like, okay, so you introduced, or I mean, you, you get to know these principles, but what would be your next steps? And it was interesting that uh, he shared that actually he would love to join um, activist groups like eco justice uh, activist groups and I would also like spread the word and educate and bring the awareness uh, among his uh, student community and beyond so I think it's it's really like it was inspiring to talk to him and to see that uh, he has this fire to actually use it and he saw the importance of it yeah thanks Nadalia and yeah like um we did the this illustration during the 20th anniversary like uh, giving all the principles having like a pic pictorial representation during uh, the 20th anniversary and that time i was with them at the secretariat so i was um, like seeing like how they work and the brainstorming of how to create all these forms and yeah and it's like it's amazing resource on how to take actions it really helped to brainstorming and by reading each principles we will get more idea like on how to um, how to implement activities at the ground level so as a follow up of all the eco peace sessions we can um, we can implement activities in our own local communities as a follow up so please stay tuned with us and Cindy do you like to share something 
closing thoughts. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Grishma. I, I think in, um, especially in the, in the little discussion that I had with Aparna, um, the the idea that whatever conviction we we um, latch onto, the one one thing that is very important is the spirit of stewardship. Um, it's more prevalent in the in the Christian Church because we we are stewards of the earth. We are not owners. We we don't own. Um, it's given to us by by the Almighty, and being a steward, how is that different from just being anybody? It's that you actually have the responsibility. So you you drive at that responsibility until you achieve. So if it is whatever means that we have talked about, either in in single use plastics or in you know roughing up your your politicians to do whatever, it is that responsibility that drive that makes these makes the Earth Charter live. I think because we are all agreed here that we should be doing something, but do we let it go um, without getting there? So if the stewardship, it's something that we take on seriously, then everything kind of falls in place, um, whether it's the community of, of people who are living or if you're finding a different place, or you are make, you are one petal of the flowers that you've made in your illustrations, which is a beautiful um, allegory. That um, yeah, we we need to get together to to decide what it is that we can do, and then go and do it. Um, that that's my take for the day. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Cindy, for sharing that and inspiring us to take actions. And yes let's do it and yeah and so we are almost on time and um, I would like to close this meeting with uh, by reading the way forward of a charter and as it says that as never before in history common destiny reckons us to seek a new beginning such renewal is the promise of this earth charter principles to fulfill this promise, we must commit ourselves to adopt and promote the values and objectives of the charter. So this Earth Charter is for us, for all the life forms. So let's commit to Earth Charter and find inspiration and let's live through this Earth Charter. So thank you so much for joining this session. And uh, let's meet on 23rd for finding the innovative ways for waste management as we are in a big crisis of managing waste. So let's uh, learn from Makion. He's joining us from, uh, he will join us from Nigeria on 23rd. So please stay tuned.